have we featured our 3D printers in any of our videos? We should I don't think introduce we have. Yeah, them. we should introduce Gertrude and Cynthia. So, Cynthia, that is our mono price printer. That was the first one that I got for Aaron for Christmas. It was on the low end of the price scale, but it turned out to be a really good... A good starter printer. A good starter printer. Cynthia is noisy as hell. <laughs> And we didn't realize how noisy she was until we got Gertrude. I just thought all 3D printers made that noise. It's not the kind of thing you want to have in your essentially one room apartment where you sleep in the same room with your 3D printer, you know? When I would have something printing for like three days and we would just go to bed hearing like... <laughs> When it was printing circles, it was like, yeah. yeah, she makes a little song when she prints circles. To me, a 3D printer is like a synthesizer, except it's synthesizing matter into whatever you want. You know what this means, though? If we took a recording of Cynthia printing and then set that to music, that would be synthwave. Uh, that's not funny. I know. We learned a lot about printing through Cynthia. So Gertrude had a slightly easier time with life in general because Cynthia had to put up with all of our both at the beginning. Cynthia's like a big sister. Temperamental big sister. Temperamental. I knew a little bit about 3D modeling before I started printing on her, but the 3D modeling I had done was mostly tutorials for like graphics and animation, which doesn't really translate well to printing because you can't have any planes with no thickness and things like that. They have to be solid objects. So that was a learning experience. And you know, just figuring out what will print with and without support. If you try to start printing something in midair, that's not actually physically possible. It had to get a feel for what the printer could actually Actually handle. There was a lot of trial and error. We started having problems with Cynthia, I want to say at the end of 2019, I think. She would be able to print like one or two layers, but then it would start to get all wiggly and stop extruding. And I would get the filament out and it was all scraggly. And I posted a forums like, what is wrong with my printer? And they were like, uh, did you replace the PTFE tube? which was not the problem. We kept assuming that the problem was somewhere in the extruder because the filament wasn't advancing the way it was supposed to. And we kept thinking it was a mechanical problem. We had replaced the stepper motor, we replaced the gear, we replaced everything else and nothing was working. When we would advance the extruder, if you watched closely what the machine was doing, it was rotating part way and then it would either stop or even back up a little bit. We completely replaced the motor and the new motor had the exact same problem that the old one did. So I'm thinking, all right, this has got to be something with the supply voltage to the motor that's causing the problem. In order to understand the problem, I should probably cover a little bit about how a stepper motor actually works. Since I'm not particularly qualified on that subject, I will instead refer you to an amazing YouTuber known as Great Scott who created the very same video that I used to understand the problem. The Cliff Notes version goes something like this. Inside the stepper motor used by Cynthia and 3D printers in general, there is a core that is basically just a bar magnet. There are four pins on the stepper motor that go to two separate sets of coils that produce a magnetic field inside of the core. You can pass current through the coils in either direction. So by changing the direction of the current through the coils, you can change the polarity of the magnetic field and thus change the orientation of the magnets that make up the core of the motor. This is beneficial for 3D printers since the movement of the motors needs to be very precise and controlled. One of the nice features of stepper motors is that if you maintain a current through the coils, the position of the motor will remain static and it requires quite a bit of torque to break its position. The motor requires the current to constantly change between the two sets of coils to advance its position, so this is normally handled by an integrated circuit or an IC. A stepper motor IC can then take an analog voltage from your microcontroller and produce the alternating current to the coils at a relative frequency to advance the position of the motor at a rate specified by the voltage. In Cynthia's case, the IC for the motor on the extruder became damaged over time, resulting in one of the four outputs unable to produce a voltage. So with four pins going to the stepper motor on each cycle through the four states of the motor, one of them wouldn't have enough current resulting in the motor position slipping due to the friction from the filament in the extruder. As the magnetic field around the 
core of the motor would collapse for about 25% of each cycle. If we tested the output using an oscilloscope, you could actually see that while one square wave was swinging back and forth between positive 28 and negative 28 volts, the other one was swinging between positive 28 and zero, which meant that the reverse current through the second set of coils was never getting activated, and thus it was losing power on 25% of each cycle. It was the chip itself that was damaged. So once we figured out it was the chip, I was able to look up the part number and find a bunch more of those chips for real cheap. And so I bought a handful of them because I knew I was going to screw it up a bunch and tried my hand at surface mount soldering for the first time which was a nightmare. It took me a couple tries. I think I went through like two or three of them before I got it right. I actually can fix them. She was out of commission for a good year. That's actually what led us to buying Gertrude because we couldn't get Cynthia to print anything and I wasn't sure that I would be able to fix it. Gertrude was named after a few different fictional characters. The one I usually refer to is the title character of a computer game called Gertrude's Secrets, which I played as a kid a very long time ago. It's also the origin of the symbol on the cover that I made for her, because the original cover on the 3D printing head was not ideal for 3D printing. I think it lasted about a day before I got a giant blob of doom and had to dismantle the whole thing to clean it out. So after that, I designed a cover that would actually allow Allow me to access the parts that I needed to service on a regular basis. So Gertrude is a little faster, much quieter, and much more photogenic, which is why we have Gertrude set up with the time-lapse camera. She can also do laser engraving and CNC work. So we got that terminal. Oh, oh. She's printing. OctoPrint is basically 3D printing software designed for Raspberry Pi. To install it on my desktop computer, which is running Windows, it was a bit of a convoluted process, but I got it to run on Windows somehow. We set that up so that we could record time lapses with Jeremy's GoPro, and that was also a learning experience. First of all, because we had to set up the whole thing, and then figuring out how to get the time lapse to work, and the printer, and the webcam, and the computer all to talk to each other. So the GoPro connects to the computer using a USB 2.0 to HDMI adapter and we built a little jig which is both a mount for the camera and also a little lamp jig thing. I took the top of the desk lamp off and stuck it inside of some electrical conduit which we bolted to the desk. And then Jeremy you actually figured out that the software that you wrote for your job you could use it to communicate with Gertrude. What? It's just a serial port. The program that I wrote for work is just a terminal program with a bunch of extra bells and whistles. You should ask what the temperature is. Uh, how do you do that? I don't know. Report temperature. M105. There you go. So advice to people who are thinking of getting into 3D printing, are curious about 3D printing. 3D printers are still very much an emerging technology. Year after year, I think they get better and better, but there's lots of room for improvement. You end up having to learn a lot about how the printer works and how the filament works. How shapes work. How shapes how work. How geometry works. How math works. My advice for 3D printing is the same as my advice for getting into anything else. Look at what other people are doing and try to break it down and take it apart and poke around and analyze how they did it, that will give you a better idea of how everything goes together. Expect to fail a lot. Sometimes it reminds me a little bit of when my grandmother would do enamels. She would do glass on metal enameling, usually copper, and she wouldn't always know if something would get burned out in the kiln or how the different materials would react. So sometimes it was a surprise seeing what came out. To some extent, I think some of the three-dimensional media that I've been working in with print and with resin to some extent have that element of being a little bit chaotic and if you look at it as if it's successful that's a pleasant surprise then you won't be disappointed as much if you would like to join us or take part in any of our 3d printing adventures we recommend you follow us on instagram join us we have spaghetti we do not actually have any spaghetti it's plastic spaghetti made from cornstarch oh yeah